You've played for a total of seven NRL clubs. You're one of three players in the history of the game to do that. You played for Souths, North Queensland, Hunter Mariners, Auckland Warriors, Belmont Tigers, West Tigers, Canberra. Total of 188 games. You've also represented New Zealand between the between 96 and 2000. You've also represented the Maoris, right, where you're originally from. You've had a huge career, a massive impact on so many people, Ty, and that's why I want to thank you for being here. I've seen your work. I've seen what you've done to the individuals on, on the stairs, the young kids, every Saturday, you, religiously. It's so hard, so tough. I've done the stairs. It's it's It challenges you. It challenges you at the core. It pushes you to the absolute limits. As a player manager, I don't see anyone in the world doing what you do, training with these individuals. I know why you do it because you're challenging them to be the best they can possibly be. But rugby league is such a hard game. It challenges you in your core and in, in every aspect it can challenge you. It, it can challenge anyone. And that's why I want to thank you for coming here. I've respected you for a long time. I've seen your growth. It's been exponential. I think so many people can learn a lot from you. And I think, you know, we talk a lot on the phone. We talk a lot about so many different things. We talk about mindset. We talk about training. We talk about discipline. And I think I want to touch on all those things you do as a rugby league manager and what the difference between, you know, different managers are and why, what, my first question to you, I guess, is this, and we're going to go back to your career, but my first question to you is this. What made you become a leader that leads as a manager the way you train? You train with the guys in the gym. You do the stairs. Like, that's a leader to me. Like, what made you do that? Um, what, it, what it is, Mets, it's... Um what I learnt in these past 15 years, I'd say. So, like you said, evolved. I've evolved. I've changed a lot from what I was, where my mentality was um, in the past, which we all do. But um, it's about having expectations of the guys that I represent, the guys that I look after, people around me, the community. It's about having expectations. And if I expect them to get up early and go and do the stairs, then... The only other th side of it is I have to do it too. I can't just be standing there barking orders. I have to show them. I have to lead them. Leading is leading the way. Leading is putting those words into actions. I've seen you on those uh, on those stairs and you're in my ear. Mm -hmm. Like you're challenging me. You're pushing me again, mate. What would your family think of you? Like how, how do you want to lead your family? Like you're, you... What I love about you is the principles and the values. The mm. principles and the values. You make something represent something. I'll give you an example, and you give me a lot of stick for this. Mm. Like you, you jump in. I, I, I remember it was the winter. You're jumping in your pool, and you're staying in there for 20 minutes. Mm. It must be like about, you know, four degrees in there, three degrees. Mm -hmm. Like you challenge yourself mentally all the time, but you make it represent something. How important is that when you're talking to your players or you're on the stairs, and you're telling them, hey, this is what you're doing this for. How important is that? Man, it's unbelievable. It's it's about teaching yourself and how I turned it around is teaching myself to tell myself when I'm going to do something that I do it. I don't hesitate. So like you said, the middle of winter, cold, raining, black, dark, outside, whatever it is, and I say I'm getting up to get in the pool, then I do it. If it's in the beach, then I do it. I just do what I put in my mind to do. That's, that's, if I say I'm going to train hard, I train hard. If I can say I'm going to erg and row these, this many ergs, 10 1 Kers, 5, 5, whatever it is, then I do it. My actions, I have no hesitation anymore. I quieten down that voice. We all have that voice that says, that's okay, just pull back a bit. I, I quieten it, I shut it right down, mate, mm. and I'm, I'm, I feel that I'm getting really good at it. It's always a challenge. It doesn't change. Everyone has a voice inside their, their heads telling them it's too hard, this sucks, it's too hot, whatever it is. So I've just taught myself in this time to um, be accountable to what I say in myself. You know, I talk to guys that, that train with me on the stairs. It's like um, 
sometimes you can look around for me, like, you know, I, I put it on the, the guys. I just hold them accountable. I look around and you say, mate, oh, if I cut this corner, if I only do this many ties not looking or, or no one's going to know. But the most important thing is, you know. Mm. Who's the most important person to know or to hide it from? Other people or yourself? You know what I mean? You've got to know that it matters to you mm. if you cut a corner. And what I know and what, when I reflect back on all of my experiences, um, when you're cutting corners, it comes and gets you somewhere down the track. It comes and it catches up with you. When you're doing the wrong thing, it catches up with you. Mm. When you're not being honest with yourself, it's catching up with you. And then going back to that, honesty Everyone knows that look in the mirror and be true to that person that you see in the reflection. Freaking, that's the truth. That's the truth. If you want to be a good father, then you've got to be true to yourself and do the right things. If you want to be a good brother, good friend, then you've got to be true to yourself first because that's who, who counts at the end of the day. Everything else is irrelevant unless you're true with yourself and honest with yourself. And so the, 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 that, that's fantastic because I love that. So what you've done extremely well is going, hey, this is how I'm going to train. This is how I'm going to work with my players. This is the values of my, my family. This is how I um, treat my mom and I talk to my dad in this respectful way. I do this with my kids. I do this with my wife. So you've pretty much connected that with pretty much everything that you do in your life. And like, for example, I, I've taken a lot from you. I go, look at that discipline there. And obviously I've put it in different parts of my life, but I use the same philosophies as you do. So, I mean, it rubs off on someone like me. You know, I don't do the Kuji stairs all the time or go in the cold plunge like you do, but I have the mentality to go, how can I use what Tyron's taught me there to be able to put it into these different areas of my life? And what I love about you, and, and let's talk about this, is... I don't know any manager in the world that does what you do with your players, mm -hmm. right? And we've talked about this a few times where, you know, you're very honest with your players. Mm -hmm. If they're doing well, you're honest with them. If they're not doing well and they've got to pick up their act or they've got to play better, you're honest with them. And it shows because you, three daily end players, mm -hmm. right? Three daily end, two of the front, best front rowers in the game that you represent, mm -hmm. it's this is not a coincidence. What what do you do with these individuals as a player manager? Give me give me some like background to how do you deal with them to perform at their best like that? Because it's it's pretty unbelievable what you've achieved this year. Mm. Well going back to that Mets, I, I like to show these guys that I am the person I am sitting here. I am the person if I'm in a suit negotiating I am the person when I'm on the stairs I'm true I'm honest I'm accountable my morals my integrity it's all the same doesn't matter so I like to connect with them so you're saying managers don't do it no, I like to connect I like to connect in that time when no one wants to hear anything when we call it the in the eye of the storm when you're absolutely friggin' gone and you can't hear anything. That's when I like to, that's when we're, we're at our most vulnerable. And if we can connect at that time, when we're having a coffee or having lunch or, or talking about their business, it's, it's real. Mm. So that's how I've, you know, doing the stairs, Will Hopper Wadi, I've been managing like 15 years now, 15, 16 years. Will Hopper was the first kid that started with me. And he spoke at one time, I get, him to, I get all the guys, if they're around, to talk with the group. And he said to them, the young guys that were there and the young people, because there's not just footy players, there's, you know, there's girls, that, uh, women that have had cancer and the survivors, there's young seven-year-old kids and 10-year-old and kids, there's kids with autism, there's um, older guys, people with, um, um, you know, we all have mental health issues or struggles, so they turn up too, and we have the same mentality. And let me tell you this, how they have to understand it or how I explain things to them, we turn up at 6.20 in the morning on your own accord, okay? So you choose whether you turn your alarm off and go back to sleep. It's raining, it's cold, it's hot, whatever it is. 
you have to make the decision yourself. So when you switch your alarm off and then get up, and some travelling from Blacktown, from Campbelltown, all over the place, Penrith, some are close. So they make the decision themselves to... So they're working on their mentality, their mindset to get up, then you get up, then you get in your car, then you... And it even starts a step before that. You're knocking your friends back on the Friday night. No, I can't. I've got a train. Let's go and do this. No, 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 I can't. I've committed. So you commit. Like I said, you, your alarm goes off. It's dark. Four o'clock in the morning. Some of them guys catch trains sometimes. Three trains, you know, the trains open at four o'clock in the morning. So 3.30, they're making their way there, get on the train. So anyway, they get all the way to, to Coogee where we meet. That's huge, and, man. Yeah, and then, so you're here. You've done the tough stuff. People, the easy thing is to bang, switch the phone off, pull the quilt over and go back to sleep. So you get there. Now you're here. You can grab a coffee. You can wait for us. You can cheat. You can not touch the line. You can not do as many stairs. But then you have to continue being true to yourself, dig in and know that now I'm here. I've done the tough stuff. So while I'm here now, let me rip in. Mm. And then be honest. And then I don't know whether you're at 100%. I don't know whether you're only doing 30%. Only you know. Mm. That's when you start building that mentality and that drive and the truthfulness. And if you can be true in those really tough times when everyone's looking for an excuse, everyone is. Mm. That's when you continue building your mindset, right? The mentality. Then when we're finished... After uh, after all of it, what they know is they've worked on their mentality first. At the end of it, you're going to get fit. And like you know, the stairs are hard. So Mate, I, all I your, it's all stairs. mentality. Yeah, so I people know. say, I've turned up here to work on my fitness. No, you haven't. You've got to get that right. You're turning up to work on your mindset mm. first and foremost, being true to yourself, knowing yourself, riding the tough times, and then at the end of it, you're going to get fit. Mm. So, mm. so essentially, you're building mental toughness in individuals yeah. to be able to take on life, yes. right? So you rep it represents something. Now, when I look back at my life, when I was in my 20s compared to where I am now, my discipline's far greater. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can block things out and focus so much more. Um, obviously, there's a bigger expectation because obviously I'm looking after more people. Mm -hmm. You're the same. You're you're a leader now, and you're a great leader. And and why I say that is because if I look at, I follow rugby league. Mm -hmm. Most rugby league players that finish don't even train anywhere near like you, mm. right? Then on top of that, you throw in that you're a rugby league manager. Like if I was to go and get managed by someone, I'd like to go probably get managed by someone that's walked through my footsteps, mm -hmm. that's been there. But then, more importantly, now you're you're. I think you just you're about to turn fifty, right? Keep it down. Mate. <laughs> Keep it down, mate, mate. But yeah, yeah. to be able to do that at that age, because you've got some horrific injuries that you you you, you mm -hmm. got in rugby league, mm -hmm. to be able to block that pain and do that is unbelievable, right? So you're not just walking the walk. But take me back to when 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 you started playing rugby league, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what I want people to know that. If you do the right things, you can change. You can become better. You can become better in every part of your life. It doesn't mean, you know, when you were playing rugby league when you were younger, they, where you didn't have the discipline, it doesn't mean you can't have the discipline. And it's, sometimes it's almost, the. It's, I reckon the best coaches weren't the best. Mm. How, how, how much has your life differentiated from back then to where it is now? So if someone was looking at Tyron Smith at 18 or 20, mm. And they look at Tyron Smith because I had this comment thrown at me the other day. Yeah, mate, you don't know the Mets at twenty. Mets is mm. at forty. So he's a completely different person. Mm. What? What? What was the? How was that so different from when you were at that age to where you are now? Oh, incredibly different. Like we know, they're just parts of life, as as we all know. We don't know as much. We think we know more than than what we do. Uh, we're influenced from the people around us, which is a fact. And then you don't know it. Mm. Uh, it's it's wanting to be the main actor, you know, you want to have a thousand mates when you're young and know everyone. But as you get older, you know that what I know is that that you can count them on one hand pretty much, you know what I mean? You, every, everyone, as you get older, you understand that. Who's really there? What are their motives? Um, 
Yeah, so so back to your question, and I'm completely different. Mm. You know, smoke cigarettes. I smoked cigarettes since I was maybe 14 or 15, pack it a day. And you, and you played at that I level? <laughs> I didn't know any other way. Yeah. I haven't smoked what, cigarettes. To what, to what age? Like, what age were you? So you were playing? Uh, I maybe mean, like Cliff tw- maybe 12, 12, 13 years ago. I, I, so you were doing that right throughout oh, your career? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Since I was young. Wow. So. But so, so how, how, I watched you play. Like, I mean, <laughs> man, you used to play long games. You were tough. I mean, Gordon Teller said you were one of the, you were the toughest player played against. Like, mm. So that, that that takes me to this next question. Your mental toughness. Imagine you had the fitness you had now. Mm-hmm. So your mental toughness, you could block everything out, even when you're playing. Yeah. Yeah, well, when I look back and how I feel now compared to then, um, yeah, it's I did block it out. I did the things. What I'm doing, going back again, is – the mental, the mentality I use, maybe to block out the wrong things, um, cigarettes in the, in that case, uh, I'm using them now. But that same mental toughness, I'm building it for the good things that uh, that that um, that enhance me. Mm. If that makes sense, one hundred percent, it makes sense to me because, like, even when I was like when I was young, I used to do things great in blocks. Yeah, but I couldn't do seasons. Mm-hmm. I couldn't back seasons. Mm. I couldn't do back to back seasons. Now I'm doing back to back seasons, whether it's in business, whether it's in my relationships, it doesn't matter what it is. Now you're doing seasons upon seasons. Mm. Where back then you'd have you probably you know yourself, you'd go great for three months and then you probably wouldn't be at your best. You wouldn't mm-hmm. be at your peak. And now you've what you've learned from your experience there is, hey, if you stay healthy, if you look after your body, if you live by these principles, if you live by these values, mm. you're going to be able to have many great seasons and a long career and then you're going to have something after rugby league. Mm. I guess you were kind of lucky that – well, I'm not, I, look, I don't look, I don't look at anything as luck, but look, if I was to go to someone, I'd like to know that someone had the experience where they weren't at their best but they still played at the highest level. I think that makes a difference. I think, and when I look at your players, correct me if I'm right or wrong, that's why you you go out there and get the best possible deal that they deserve because you don't see that happen in rugby league. You see contracts that that individuals are getting and and, and, and there's, you know, they're questionable. Mm-hmm. How do you differentiate that from what everyone else is getting? What do you do when you go in and bat for your player when it comes to contracts? I think I've maybe developed a reputation where where I'm very transparent. Um, I'm, I'm honest, and I know football. I know the players, um, and I push for their real, genuine worth, mm. their value. I don't need to to do a favour for anyone. I don't expect favours back as far as clubs and I'm not too sure, you know, um, if other agents do that or not, but that's just me. Mm. I call it a spade. I call a spade a spade. We need to firstly prioritize. I need to know where a player fits in your, in your pecking order. Mm. I get to make sure the players are prioritized at a club, those sorts of things. I talk extensively with with my players that I represent to understand what in their life, what's what's their lives, what 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 creates happiness. It's not always money and it's not always the fame. You've got to know what you know, what where you are in your life. You've got to know what's important to you. You've got to stay true to your core values, to your principles. That's what determines um, players and clubs and contracts that's a mm. big part of it and i and if you ask any of the guys we i talk right through it mm. they know every email they know every club that i've had discussions with they know the responses they get everything and i think it's important because as well the young kids young kids you know they're young but these are skills that i'm trying to teach them to understand yourself See the things around you that are important. Never forget them. 
the real important stuff. And um, um, yeah, then be clear on where you want to go. Yeah, you understand? Hundred percent. Because when you bought John Hopper Hopperwadi in a, a few months ago, mm-hmm. and and he he was here after you left. He was doing a bit of boxing, and we're talking about you, and 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 he said. What Tyron does extremely well, and, and he goes, and these were his words, and he said, it's rife in football where player managers don't do the right thing by the player, they do the right thing by the club. So they they, they put the club first, Tyron puts the player first. Mm. And he goes, what's great about him is the transparency. He shows the emails, he shows the messages, he shows everything mm. to the actual player. And you see a lot of players now, you know, you see five, eight, ten year uh, contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at a contract like that, if it was one of your players, what would you be looking for for your player on a contract like that? Because it looks like it's very lucrative. It looks like it's in favour for the player. But what would you look for in a contract that is, you know, 10 years and, and for a lot of people it looks like, wow, this guy's got a lot of money. Mm. But is it always like that? Um, I haven't done any 10-year contracts um, myself. But I think it's important to know the player. I think it's important to understand um, how hard you're going to, how 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 consistent you're going to be, and how hard you're going to continue to work. I think um, you know you. It, it might sound good a contract, multiple years. It's locked in, but where you're going to take your career, all that real fulfillment okay the year contract you've got security um, financial security and secu- secure for your family or, or yourself but the things that really make you tick is continue to strive in that place in this club is that going to be the best place are they always going to prioritize you to help develop you and put players around you that are going to benefit you and sometimes you can go through a club when everything's going good as an example, but um, some personnel change, the coach might change, and then mm. where do they see you? So you've got to factor that in too, and you've got to know. And going back to it, I teach these guys to know themselves, know what's important to you, know what you want to do. Know some players can say, mate, I need a shorter contract because I've found in the part if I've signed long term, I can get a little bit complacent. Mm. So... So that's knowing themselves. That's true, and, and we get the right result. You know? Yeah, because because if it's a ten year contract, like in my mind, the player would wouldn't give it a hundred percent all the way through because he, he does get complacent. He does get comfortable. When you sign a player on on a big contract, do you do you have a chat to them beforehand and go, listen, man, this is a great deal. You deserve this. Mm-hmm. You got to lift. Yeah, we yeah. can't drop this. Yeah. Then, do you have those conversations? Hundred percent. Talk to them about that level contract and what uh, is expected. Mm. So you can sign for one point two million bucks. You're expected to win the big games. You're expected to be on. You're expected to stay longer. You're expected to get there earlier. You're expected to talk to the sponsors. Um, present yourself well. Um, stay out of controversy, mm. you know, and then so for that, that example, half of that six five six hundred k contract, you're not expected to win the games as much. You're always expected to be on, and maybe I'm saying that a bit loosely. Every game you're expected to be on, mm. but those different tiers um, create more pressure and more expectation. So a guy on 1.2 million bucks and a guy on 100 grand, there's different pressure and yep. expectations, you know. They're expendable a bit. These guys aren't mm. because you're banked on it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have those conversations. You have to understand it. You have mm. to understand the team, your surroundings, where you where the team's sitting sometimes, mm. you know. Um, yeah. I'm guessing as well you're getting paid 1.2, right? You're young. You've just got married, you got kids, now you got money. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the 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 trouble that they're gonna probably come up against mm. is now you got you got distractions. Mm. How do you ever like? Obviously, 
I'm sure like everyone would go through it. I mean, I, I, I went through it when I was in my 20s. I was getting distracted easy. Mm. Do you, does that happen a lot? And what do you do in those situations? Yep, well, like you said, all young people go through it. Footy players, you know, rugby league players, um, they're held in a different category. Everyone wants to be around them. If you're a big footy fan, you like to be walking with the prize bull, if you want to call it yeah. that, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, the, the distractions, the, 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 the actual fact of just having large amounts of money and where you, what your focus is, where you're focusing before you're turning up early. Now you're counting your, your you know, looking at your, your balance in your bank and, you, you know, looking at cars and property maybe that mm. you want to buy, you know. So... Um, do you help players with that? Like, do you, do you guide them? Because you, you, you kind of go, okay, man, I'm going to get you 1.2, but hey, listen, we've got to have a chat. Yeah, 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 definitely. I don't really tell them what to do with their yeah. money, but I you help them, them implement... Yeah. implement systems to save implement mm. systems to mate you know what i mean mm. this is that's not good enough how can this amount of money be spent you know on what so you just got to be aware of it got to try and um yeah properties usually is uh, uh, um important mm. to players because and what i know as well is tangible you can touch it they can see it Mm. They start to have a reason for why they're playing when they can see it and feel it. Sometimes, and not or not all of them, but sometimes owning property is is um, very rare. So they can't sometimes visualize it until they go bang, mm. and then they can, like I said, feel it. It's tangible. They're in it. They understand it. So they start playing to continue building mm. that feeling of success mm. when they can drive down the street and say. I own that place I, and there's a unit that I own and plus my house I own, you know. Mm. So to, I think that's the, the one of the biggest drives mm. for, for players anyway, young. You, you know, you're, you, you've retired, you've gone on to manage um, some of the best players in the NRL, overseas, everywhere. When you look at a player retiring, mm -hmm. Do you do you do you still have a relationship with them? Do you kind of guide them on where to go and what to do next? Because you finish your career, it's the only thing you've known pretty much all your life. Yep. Does that become a a a point where you go, hey, listen, with me when you finish your career, I'm gonna I'm gonna guide you in the right direction. What do you see that happens then? What are some of the challenges that happen with players when they finish their career? And what do you do for yours? Um what are the challenges? The challenges are, it's been, it, it, it's such a big part of your life, obviously. You're in the group, you're in the routine. Rugby league players, I've said this before, and I know it as a player, you're trained and taught to do what you're told. Mm. When they say run through that wall, okay, you just, so you're, and you're taught to do what you're told. You turn up, you're in a full routine, okay? Mm -hmm. You know it. So then coming out of it, um, players can feel a bit lost because you're, you know, it's a different world, um, a rugby league world, yeah? It's like mm -hmm. a, it's a, yeah, it's, 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 it's a different world. So now they have to get used to a, a routine, man, so creating their mm -hmm. own routine, creating... Um, um, something that inspires them um, and and committing to it as well. And then g going back to what you asked at the start of that question was players, yeah, I maybe one player's retired from mine pretty much. Um, they're starting to retire now. The first group of guys, the uh, Will Hopawadi, mm. could be finishing up, I think, this year. Uh, Manu Ma'u, mm. um, He's maybe got one year left, I think. He's over at Catalans. Um, the Blake Austins, they were the first sort of group of guys that I brought through. Mm. Suya Matangis. Um, so, yeah, I want, I want to continue my relationship with them and continue guiding them. And hopefully um, they can make the transition into coaches, well-being roles, working with the RLPA, 
Mm. You know, Will Hopawadi, going back to him, played um, Origin when he was 18, 19 years old, won grand finals that same year. He went away on his mission. You know, Mm. it was true. It was um, true to him. Um, It was a desire of his. Um, And then he came back. Took him a bit of time to get going again, but mm. then continued in his career in the NRL and then now playing over at St. Helens. So um, he's got a lot of experience to pass on. Mm. You know, yeah. So, you know, part of your job is obviously guiding him. Rugby league's a tough sport, Ty. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's, you know, they deserve what they get. Yeah. And a lot of the times, you know, you see in the media, they talk about, you know, players don't deserve that contract. Mm. And this is this is a segue into this next question. You look at Boyd Cordner. Mm. You know, I was watching that mm. special on him and I've seen a few clips where, you know, the concussions have really affected him. Mm. You know, and it's not a long career, mm. right? It's a short career. You know, and rugby league players cop a lot of, uh, of, of, of you know, um, bad press mm. about, you know, they're soft and, and, and you know, you know, they don't deserve that much money. Mm. Then you see, he, he, he's got a lifelong problem now that he's got to deal with. Yeah, I know. And what, what, do you, what do you say to, you know, you know, the media and individuals saying, oh, you know, he's getting too much money? Right, the keyboard warriors, mm. they wouldn't know how to survive in that arena that Boyd Corden has been in. To say that, you can't even factor in what, take it serious, someone able to, a couch potato, uh, someone that's not played or not played at that level, to s- actually comment on it. Mm. It's like us commenting on UFC fighters. Oh, mate, it's a bit soft. They shouldn't get paid as much. Mm. You know, what do, what do I know about that? I mm. couldn't. And what I'm looking at, I, I could probably half understand how brutal it is. And these guys that run on the field, yeah. Long-term injuries, man. It's standard part of rugby league. Like the guys that play long, a minority will finish without some long-term um, injuries or, mm. or physical problems. You yeah. know what I mean? Chronic, chronic pain for yeah, the rest totally. of their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that, mate. I just myself torn my medial ligament maybe twelve times, my lateral. My cruciate's still 50% torn. The cartilage is damaged. Um, did my medial this side, my lateral this side maybe three or four times. Had my uh, shoulders operated on three on my left, two on my right. They still sublux. So wow. I can sleep and my right shoulder will pop, will slide out, yeah. in and out. Um, I was a bit... You know, I took it a bit far, but what I did, because my shoulders would pop out towards the end of my career, I had just had the cartilage taken out. Wow. So now they're just bone on bone. They rattle. They're full of arthritis. Yes. That was the last time they were operated on, maybe 17 years ago. Mm. So um, when I cracked my vertebrae, I pushed the disc into my spinal cord, so that's a uh, get headaches in there yeah. quite a bit. Uh, lose strength in my right arm uh, because of that. Mm. Broken my ribs, sternum. Wrists, fingers, hands. I remember you said yeah, hands. yeah, my hands. Yeah, get right. cold, mate. My elbow, half my elbow taken out. That doesn't straighten. Yeah. So, mate. Yeah. It's, uh, so there is another side to that. Yeah. But players have got to maximise mm. um, um, their value, their earnings, um, and understand it. You got to understand it. Yeah. And I and I what I say to guys is. Don't, you don't have to always hang on and go to the death and continue. Like you can uh, set your goals. You can, um, yeah, have an idea what you want to do. Don't mm. need to go until you're broken to say that's it. Mm. There's a time frame. Um, and, yeah, you got to know, like, again, know what you want. Yeah. Know who you are. Know, yeah, have your goals and I, I, I'm – very strong on um, players having journals and writing down their stuff. Well, I got the vision board off you. Yeah. Remember you were saying vision board, vision board, vision board and journaling. I yeah. think it's important. I think, mm. you know, when you look at everything that they cop, all the injuries, you know, the trauma after you finish the game, trying to get out of bed, 
they deserve what they get. But what you do, I think you do really well is you go, I want you to journal. I want you to have a vision. What does life look after rugby league? Mm. What do we need to do? And like right now you're saying, hey, listen, don't play one t- season or two seasons too long because it, it's going to have an effect on you that is irreversible in, in a lot of cases. And you see it happen so many times. How – obviously from a, from a concussion perspective, the game's changing a lot, mm-hmm. right, in, in that instance. You're, you've got a son that plays the game. How hard is it watching him play? compared to anything else because it's harder it's your own kid i know what it's yeah, like yeah. i've got kids myself mm-hmm. i know what it's like mm. you know it can't be the same yeah no it's enjoyable it's um um you go into a little bit deeper into mm. it you know what i mean watching everything and um i admit it is tough but at times especially injury wise it's not good to see anyone injured mm. but you can feel it a little bit more with your own kids like you'd understand mm. um but it's it's what they are mate it's what mm. they enjoy you know what i mean it's like yeah. you got to be aware of it but you also got to have that fulfillment you know you got to have that passion as well and you got to continue moving forward and thriving and striving to be better and if you're gifted at it and you've worked hard for a period and you're still working hard, then it's hard to turn it away, mate. But yeah. um, I tell everyone, parents that I talk to, it's not all that it seems to because mm. of exactly that. Mm. It's not all that it seems. There's, um, there's a downside to it too. It's exactly what you think. You're gonna be, Your body's going to be predominantly buckled yeah. you know what i mean yeah and, and that's a long time living um with the injuries yeah long time and th- that's why i think for you uh, as a dad no because you've played the game you've seen it all mm-hmm. now your son's playing and 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 it it goes through your mind again mate i don't want him to have the pain i got mm. but I, I don't want him you still want him to go through challenges mm. you still want him to go through yeah. all that i think it it, it gets him battle hardened for life mm-hmm. You know, in terms of everything that they do, mm. and you're right, you can't stop them. Mm. It's hard to stop them. My daughter played rugby. I was freaking out. She, she done bloody. She jumped in the boxing ring and she wanted to spar. Fuck! Mm. I was like, man, I can't watch this, <laughs> and I had to watch it. Yeah. But you know, like my wife would say, "Aren't you gonna have a word to go, mate?" So I don't like telling kids to not do that. Mm. If they want to do that, I go. It's mm. hard to watch, mm. but. I go, like, I played the game myself mm. and I, I didn't like anyone telling me that I couldn't do it. I don't want to hurt it. I don't want to do that with her. So I get it. I, I, I understand that part a lot. And so, like, and I guess a great advantage of yours is when families come to you or, or parents come to you and, and they go, my kid's got this, this and this and you've already gone through it because mm. your you kid plays in the NRL at the highest mm. level. What do you say to those families? Because everyone thinks their kid or their son or their daughter's a star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm very honest with them. Like I said, I'm, I'm always honest. I Maybe as a manager, I say the opposite to what I'd guess and what I've experienced most managers say. And it's, um, you've got a small percentage of getting there. You're going to, you know, you, you, you need resilience because you're going to come across some injuries at times. Um, I say to them, that rugby league's not for everyone. I say to them that you need to make sure you can you understand your kids enough to understand um, what their mentality is too because mental health's a big thing mm. in rugby league, uh, you know. Huge. And uh, you, the, continue cha- the continuous challenges, the... The anxiety that it can build, not knowing whether you're in the team, not knowing whether your contract's going to be renewed, not knowing um, if you've done enough, um, uh, when you've had a bad game or an off game. Player, player manager, business owner, even from that aspect when they're coming through, it's the kid that does the extras. Mm. So then what happens is they're more resilient to, you know, if things didn't work out mm-hmm. or you didn't get the right results or you, you got dropped from the gym, uh, the team. You know where to go back and do the extras, right? 
They've built the extras in. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's life, man. It's business. It's mm. failing that you got to lose pretty much mm. to respect that when you win. Yeah. You've got to fail your businesses, which predominantly a lot of them do, businesses in general, so you can keep building your resilience and getting up off the ground again, dusting yourself off and going again. Mm. It's no different to rugby yeah. league except it's just physical Yeah, and the demands – yeah, and huge. the guys and the mentalities that that are there, you know, yeah. there's it's a lot, mate. It, time it's a lot yeah. when you look at you, we look at, and this is what I've taken away. When I look at you as a player manager, you've got to look at the expectation that the the, the family and the parents set on the kid. Yep. You got to look at the work ethic of the kid if they're doing extras. Yep. Then when they start playing the game, they have to be able to. Um, understand what contracts are, mm -hmm. where they have to invest their money, yep. and that if they want more money, they're going to have to level up mm -hmm. and create a standard. Mm -hmm. They don't, they can't get complacent when that happens. Yeah. They got to control all the distractions outside yeah. the sport. Then they have to put up with all the injuries and the pain they're going to cop post rugby <laughs> league. There's so much you got to go through from a young age yeah. all the way through. Like when you you just yeah. painted this yeah. picture. And then people are saying that these kids don't deserve the money yeah. when they've sacrificed their whole life. Yeah. yeah. And then you, as a player manager, honest, true, transparent, to get these guys what they deserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know if I've missed anything there, but but I and think in a nutshell, it, that's the truth of it. You know, I want to play rugby league. It's so easy to say, but are you willing to go through all of that? Are you willing to? The, that's Endure the picture. all of those challenges. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I want to play rugby league. I want to be playing on a Friday night and scoring tries like a Dallin Martin is Lesniak. Mm. I want to be a big front row at it. I want, you know, I want to be, but what they go through. Mm. Dallin's punctured his lung maybe three times now. Wow, man. That and guy the punctured is his machine. lungs from the contact. Yeah. So con going into contact. And tearing the tissue of his lung and deflating his lung. I don't know. Then they, they put tube in his back through his uh, rib, between his ribs. Yeah. Suck the fluid out, then pump it up, and then they've even patched it up at one stage. You know what I mean? He's had his meniscus done. He's had to have regrow. Forgot what it's called to have your meniscus yeah. regrowing. It's, it, you know. I remember when you were telling me about Dallin and just what he's had to endure. And play the game, and then be, be the winger of the year. Mm. And he's like he's been playing the game for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just the, I mean, when you're talking about a player, you go, this is that player, that's a role model. Because mm. mm. I know he doesn't drink either. No, each to their own with everything. Yeah, but yeah, for he, in his case, no, never drank, never been in nightclubs, doesn't swear. Wow. So you see what you see on on TV and in with his interviews, very. Yeah happy-go-lucky guy and for his success this year and um, I'm sure you won't mind me saying this that he just feels that everything off the field is in a good spot mm. and it creates the on field yeah. and that's the truth too mm. when you're happy you're inspired you've got the right um, processes in place mm. you're turning up with that really good mentality then you're putting in on the field at training and then it, it um, yeah. um, makes a big difference mm. so what you're saying is and i think that is relatable to everything right yep if everything outside of what you're doing is in place mm -hmm. and you're honest true truthful like he is like if yep. you look at his life yeah, yeah. he doesn't drink doesn't get on nightclub mm -hmm. doesn't swear mm -hmm. look at the values and the principles that he's got so, you know, he's got a good team, good management team, mm. his probably wife, kids, I'm assuming. Um, and all of that is really good, which has cultivated into winger of the year, mm. best player. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show when you can control the external, yep. what the internal becomes easier. And I think, you know, everything is internal, they say. But sometimes the external forces affect mm. our decisions. It affects a lot of the well, things in life, right? Well, have heard that, Mets, you know. Everyone, or well, maybe a lot of people have heard this, is show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future. Mm. You know, when you're hanging around with the guys in a team that are on the outer, that aren't up to scratch, that are a bit behind in their fitness and you're buying into their mentality and 
you'll actually um, sort of, if you're not mentally strong enough, you'll start to convert and then, yeah. you know, um, follow their pathway if it makes sense. 100%. So you've got to be able to, even like in general, negative, like, mate, you know what, good to see you. You don't have to tell them you're negative and hammer him. You just got to say, that's what I do now. Come across someone with bad energy or, or negativity in that, I'm like, mate, good to see you, man, I've got to go, you know. I just mm. move away, that's good. I keep myself surrounded with with good mindset. But, but you did help me during COVID. I was yeah. a bit negative. I guess when they're close friends, it's different. I remember yeah, you yeah, did yeah, help me yeah, a lot yeah. and you, you did, you, you guided me in the right way. You know, my mind wasn't in the right place. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a tough time. And, and, and you just said simple things to me. I can't even remember what they were, but they were just simple takeaways. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and you almost went down to the basics of, hey, let's just be grateful for this. Come on, man, you can do this next thing. You can do this next thing. You do that extremely well, Tyron. You do that with a lot of people. And I remember that, that, those moments. I remember them a lot. And I remember you were there when I, w I was struggling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at life in itself, I, and I asked myself the question when I was struggling, was I really who I really aimed up to be? And I don't think I was. Mm -hmm. Honestly, don't, I don't think I was. I was probably a good person. I was doing everything. But maybe when I look back at my life, you know, things were going good. And it's not about when things are going good. Mm -hmm. It's when the real struggle happens. Yeah, who yeah. are you? It's easy to be killing it when, when everything's flying. Mm. It's when you're in your low parts is when you need to really sit back. I talk to what I do and I talk to, to the guys that do the stairs with me. Um, it's about um, conditioning yourself in the morning. Mm. Like thinking of the things you're grateful for. That's what I do. What am I happy for? What am I grateful for? Sometimes grateful that I can go to the stairs. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Not... Many people have that mindset. Not many, Some people aren't physically able to get there. I talked to the group about conditioning your mind in the morning to start it your day how you want to start it. Don't wait to get in the car with your negative mate on your way to work and he's just, you know, bagging everything. Mm -hmm. Don't wait to pick up your social media and just go, oh, mate, and then you go back into the mindset you had yesterday. You know, become negative and this and this. Do you know what I mean? Condition yourself. And then you'll, oh, what I find is, have more really good days than not. And there are challenges. We all have our challenges, mate. But I think that little component, first thing in the morning, before you look at your phone, anything, it's just uh, reflect. Mm. Reflect on what you love, mate. Yeah, what I you, love that. Yeah, yeah. What you, what's important to you? And then start your day like mm. that. It's just so simple, right? Just keep it, it simple, really. Yeah. The sun's coming up. Yeah. I talk to these guys. Tell me something positive, mate. How good is this view? They say from mm. the stairs. You know what I mean? Yeah. The sun's not up. Mate, hey, look at the sun. Look at that sunrise. Mm. They can stop and look and it takes the takes them to a place. It's just how we work. Yeah. I know you're limited with time, so I'm going to finish with this. Obviously, you've, you're building an academy. Sports player management, right? Yeah, it's a yeah, bit of it's an, player, yep, yeah. Yep. And um, tell me quickly a little bit about that because I want people to go uh, look for it. You've built a new website and be part of so, you know something huge that you're doing as you're passionate about. Tell me a little bit about that and where people can find you. Yeah, well, everything we've spoken about and training, people that come down to train know it, but I just want to build something that can be that I can reach more people so even young kids in New Zealand Fiji wherever they are and just to help put things in place and hold them first to give them the tools to um, better their lives and then help them hold them accountable and tasks and stuff so we're working on that hopefully it should be I don't know done by the end of this year or, or next year mm. right online um, um, yeah so it's and that's the best place to find you, obviously, you're on Instagram, but that's that's a passion of yours, something that you've always wanted to do yeah. for a long time, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. I, I And a project I'm, I love I'm giving assuming. It. Yeah, yeah, I, you do. I think, um, I think receiving starts with giving. Mm. I think good things come to good people. Yeah. And I'm sure we've all made mistakes. Everyone has. Oh, man, I've not, made plenty. Like we, we spoke earlier. But um, 
having that uh, mentality now mm. and uh, believing it and living by it and teaching my kids that mm. and everyone else around me is to, um, yeah, be a good person. Good things come to good people. Yep. And give. Yep. Give, make someone happy by giving something. It's always more valuable, feels better than mm. just receiving something itself. Of course, we like that, but when you can make someone extremely happy, when you can give someone the tools to 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 have a better life, it's, you know what I've I, I get out of it. The players that I've helped become successful um, in their careers, I've spoken at their weddings, mate. You know what I mean? Mm. I I love you know seeing these guys. Manu Ma'u and Suya Matangi, if you if you remember back there, Parramatta and Suya played at a few clubs too. You know where they were? They'd never been out of New Zealand, never been on a plane. We worked 18 months with them to get their visas and their, you know, work yeah. on their mentalities. Then they come over, they play in a role, they both play for, for New Zealand um, at that level. They both play for their uh, birth um, teams, yeah. Tonga and Samoa. Now they're living in, uh, one's in, in France and the other one's in the UK. They've taken their families. You know, their yeah. families have lived worldly, have been raised worldly. Their daughters been to Paris, their daughters, Paris, mate, Turkey. Mm. They've travelled the world compared to where they were at 25 and 26 years old. Never been out of a country. So what opportunity they've given their kids. That's... That's part of why I do what I do, mm. to make them better, to make them successful, to give them the opportunity to make their kids better, better people and, and learn more, and then their kids' kids. So I'm not going to be around then, but if I have a, a part in helping that, then that reflects onto other people, then, you know, like I said, yeah. them, their partners, then their kids, and then their kids' kids. Mm. Hopefully we can... 100% man look that's what you call a player manager that's a player manager I mean mm. if people are listening to this and they're gonna watch this when you look at a player manager you know Ty's building an academy and he's doing something beyond just the player for their kids their families is huge and um you know he's easy to find get down to the Coochie stairs every Saturday <laughs> His new website, we're gonna have it, we're gonna have it up. Yep. Um, and you're gonna to get to see some of the great work. And I just wanna thank you. I know you're limited with time. We've been trying to get you on for a while. I know. But you're you're a hard man to get hold of. But um, mate, I hope you enjoy that. Thanks a lot, brother. And I really appreciate it and 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 I love having our chats. Thanks, mate. Thanks, brother. Thanks, thanks for having me in yeah. time. We can do this. I love it. I love passing on my I think knowledge. we're gonna to have to do it more, bro, because I think yeah. people need this. They need yeah. this. The way you live, the way I live. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a huge synergy and um, I just hope you enjoyed it, bro. I hope it was better yeah. than uh, you expected coming on, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and just having these discussions here to promote you more, to make, you know, it known to everyone that they it, you're necessary. You're absolutely necessary and I think everyone should, you know, if they're lucky enough to be with you, the players that are with you, you know, um, take advantage of, of someone that's a great human being that's been helping people for so many years. I just want to thank you for that. Uh, thanks again, Mitz. And one more thing, uh, just on that, the knowledge that I've accumulated from my, my own experiences and the people around me, I, I really focus on and take on board the things that I think are relevant. And then what my role is and my job pretty much is to pass on that information. Mm. We can't take it with us, Mitz. Mm. You know what I mean? We've got to give. Yeah. We've got to give it out to people. Why? What are you going to do with it? Everything you've learned in building gyms. If you can help some other young kid build their gym and set up a system, you know, they don't need to reinvent the wheel. 100%. You give it to them. And then, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what We're actually it is. doing videos on that. You know, we've done a video the other day just about like what I see, like what I yeah. look for in the gym. You know, when you, if you want to open a gym, you've got to look at this, this and this. It's very important. And I think... You know, you're right. You got, and the more you give, the, the better life becomes. You do that well. You've done it with me. You've done it with thousands and thousands of people, and you'll continue to do that because that's who you are, and you do a great job of it. Oh, thank sure. you, bro. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for having me, mate.